anyway, my heart is to encourage you today, wherever you are, is to take care of yourself. Just a little bit more about me is we have five children. We have three that are adopted and two biological, and we adopted a sibling group. So it was uh, those years of teaching and loving and parenting all of those kids was uh, full of a lot of trauma. My adopted kids did not have the start in life that my biological ones did. And so yeah. it was. I was a homeschooling mom for 23 years. I feel like I should have a medal or a crown or, or something. But in all those years, I did not take care of myself very well. I think today the topic of self-care is a lot more of a hot topic and I think it's something that you hear about. I was helping my elderly parents as they were going into those older years and they got sick and went into a nursing home. But anyway, so parent, helping my parents walk through those years, those were years where I was just so incredibly stressed and I didn't know how to ask for help and I did not take care of myself or I did not take care of my body very well even though I exercised I did not eat well and so last couple years I have been on a journey to figure out what is wrong with my body because my body just kind of gave out on me. I have the Epstein-Barr virus which is in the herpes family of viruses like chicken, uh, sh chicken pox and shingles and um, different ones. I had mono as a kid I was about 18, which is a kid these days. So I had mono, um, Epstein-Barr virus is what causes it. I see a functional med medical doctor, and she has really, really helped me dial in to what I need to do, give up gluten, sugar, dairy, all the good things in life to help my body recover. But what I really wanted to talk to about today and to encourage you, wherever you are on this journey, is that I think as women, I can generally just say we don't take care of ourselves very well. We are usually often the primary caregiver um, with the kids. And often if there's siblings in parental relationships, um, you may be the one who's doing the big slow to the burden and helping take care of your parents. I think self-care is being able to address your physical, your spiritual, your um, emotional and mental needs. Each of us is wired differently. And I think we each are created differently by God and we each have different needs. I know for me, it was very hard, very hard. And I went to counseling to help this is to ask for help. That was not something that I did. I just felt like I should be able to handle it and I should carry the burden. And I think maybe in general, women are kind of wired that way. Maybe not everybody, but that's the way that I am. How do you, um, Find the time, find the energy, put yourself as a priority when we're talking about self-care. What, what, do you know how to listen to your body? Do you know how to say, hubby, I need a little bit of time from the kids right now. My coping skill was just to keep it all inside, to get resentful and then explode. And y'all, that's not healthy. Anybody else do that? <laughs> just me. So a better option would have been to ask for help and just say, it's been a hard day. Can you come take care of the kids for an hour while I go do X, Y, and Z? So there are my thoughts on that. But making time for it, if you are in the busy season of parenting kids, like I was, maybe you're working a job and you're a mom, or you're in that in-between season where you have elderly parents that, that need guidance because you're at a different, different stage. Um, or you're just in the middle, or maybe you're at a little later stage in your life where I am, where we just have one kid left at home and she's doing her own thing, working, she's doing great. But I still have to go and listen to my body and say, today I need extra rest. You know, I think when you reach this stage, and I'm gonna just tell you I'm 57 and I'm proud. I'm glad I made it this long. Every day is a good day. Uh, at this stage of life, I am more in tune with my body than I've been in years past because I think you just go, you know, I can take care of this. I can do it myself. I don't know if that's an independent streak or if that's your personality or whatever, but I had some thoughts on what self-care looks like and how do you do it? One for, I think is so very important is to ask for help. Um, asking for help can be really hard. I'm just gonna tell you a short little story. I had gallbladder I've had two carpal tunnel surgeries and I had gallbladder surgery the year after that. And my husband and I, and I write about this on my blog and in social media and I'm not sharing anything. My husband and I hit bottom and we've been married 30 years and it was 
we just hit bottom. So I went to counseling. He ended up going to counseling. We all did counseling. But in um, that, I had gallbladder surgery. And I remember going to surgery you know, and that he was going to have to take me home. And he was going to have to help me for that day or whatever. And I did not like it. We were not in a good place. It felt awful. Can anybody relate? Is it just me? But the process of healing our relationship and learning that it is not a weakness to ask for help was just life changing for me. And that includes my kids. That includes like my daughter who lives at home saying, oh, can you sweep floors or can you change cat litter because you've got a cat, whatever. Those things don't feel comfortable maybe at the beginning, but they are possible. And I'm proof that that, that change can happen. I think self-care can be made a priority. It doesn't mean that you just go watch TV and in your bedroom for hours and hours and let the kids run the house. But it does mean that you understand that in order to fill someone else's cup, your cup has to be filled. And, and our counselor that worked with our kids for many years, she would always tell me that. And I would listen and then I would, I would try to apply that. I think as women, if we can model it for the next generations, that we are helping other women feel like they're not alone. I think in my journey, I felt like I was alone. I really, our adoption situation and the parenting that we had to do with the kids from trauma, it was very, very difficult. It felt different. It wasn't, um, it wasn't what I thought my life was supposed to look like. So I think if I had learned better how to take care of myself and accept where I was at that part of my journey, I think. I a better or been able to model it better for my kids, especially my daughters, but it's never too late. Never. How do I take care of myself so I can be my best self? Now I'm a business owner and I, that is my primary focus other than being a wife and mom. But my job now requires that I take care of myself because I help provide for our family financially. And I think understanding that it's not selfish to, um, say, I need to take care of myself, or I can't say yes to this activity or to this demand or need or whatever. That's not, you know, that is just okay. That is a good thing. And I wish I had claimed that a lot earlier. So addressing physical needs, um, I tried throughout the years and, you know, we walked as a family, did stuff like that. But it's been very hard this last year, quite honestly, the last two years being sick, being not being able to exercise in the way that I want to, but I push myself and try to lose my body exercise when I can. And even if it means just getting up off the couch or out of your chair, I encourage you to go do it. It's awesome. Exercise will give you those endorphins that make you feel better, think better, look better, be better. Another way is dealing with your emotional health. So um, going to counseling was life changing for me. And I realized that there were so many, even, even though I was, came from a very healthy family of origin, um, because of the parenting and the trauma and the things that we have been through over the years, I needed to work through some stuff. I actually did some uh, session of grief counseling, but dealing with some of the things, um, guilt and struggles that we all do dealing with that counseling has been just the best thing. It made me healthier. It's changed how I view the world. It's changed how I view myself. I think with women friendships, in the hardest years of parenting, I had just a very few friends and they loved me in spite of the weird and the crazies that was my life. And we have stayed friends for all these years. And I, I still tried to get out and meet people, but I didn't share the most private parts of my life, except with those people that I could trust. And so finding a safe place, someone you trust. And, and let me ask you that. Do you have someone you trust that is your safe place that you know is going to love you and challenge you and, and just support you and pray for you. I have met some internet friends that I've never met in real life. And um, I can count on them to pray for me. Even though I've never met them, I do know their heart. So I would encourage you in your relationships with women. I think we can all look at everybody else and think they're normal and we're not. It's just not true. We've all got stuff. That's, that's the one thing that I've learned. And as I've gotten older, I also realized that the, the mental aspect of taking care of myself is important too. I like to challenge myself with learning. Running a blog and a business has been a challenge. Hello, technical. So it has been really good for me to challenge my brain in that way to see that I can still do hard things mentally. That um, especially as you get older, man, your diet and 
Again, keeping your brain active is what's going to keep Alzheimer's at bay. I read a lot about that. And one of the things I've experienced with this Epstein-Barr virus and the mold exposure is brain fog. Frustrating, so very frustrating. And I know that I have to continue to do the hard things to heal because I don't want to live in this brain fog. Anybody else have brain fog? Anybody else? I mean, I remember when I had kids and I had five kids and homeschooling and dinner and all those things. I just thought it was normal to walk three feet away and forget what I was doing. And I, I think that is an overwhelm normal. But I also think there's a brain fog that can come from not eating well and not taking care of yourself. Anyway, I think um, the spiritual is a really important aspect. My faith is my most important part of my life. And I believe that when we take care of our spiritual needs and we put God first, everything comes into place and we have a greater vision that we are able to see and just look at, okay, what do I need to do today, Lord? Just open those doors, open those windows, be very clear to me what I am to do today. But I think learning how to take care of ourselves as women is just so important. So that's why I'm going a little off topic, be getting a little personal. Um, a community of believers in your church, you know, I think it's easy to worship online and not go to church, but I think it's really important to have other believers who believe in the like mind and are committed to, to moving forward and doing good work. I also think releasing what you can't control, ouch. Please somebody tell me that's hard for you too, to let go of those things that you cannot control. And as a parent of older children now, realizing that lifestyle choices and decisions are not on me, that I've raised them and done the best I can and I can let that go. So letting go of those things that I can't control has really helped heal my body. And the last thing I'm just gonna say is the practice of gratitude. I think we think we're grateful, but then hard things come and it's very difficult. And we go, why me, Lord? And I don't think that's how we should should apply that to our lives. Um, my family and I, we do on Thanksgiving, we have a blessing jar. And we've been doing this, this routine for probably 25 years. But during the year, as they were kids, I would have them put slips of paper with the things that they were grateful for. And we have this huge jar now. And those children that have their own families, they bring slips of paper and it makes us all think, what are we grateful for? Because it could be so much worse. I just always tell myself, no matter what is going on, it could be so much worse. And I have friends that are going through very deep, deep, hard, hard things, and it could be worse. And the ability to be grateful for where we are and know that we have another day above ground. My, my dad used to say, any day above ground is a good day. I think just being aware that life is a gift and that none of us get through this life without trials and without heartache and being grateful because that's, I know that I am who I am because of the trials and things that I've been through. Does it mean it was easy? No. And I find that in self-care, if you can challenge your thinking and what you believe, you are going to be so much better off in some way. I do not have all the answers, but I believe God has called me to, to help you at whatever stage of your life. Know that you have a purpose and a plan and that God has good things in store for you. And that wherever you are, whatever you're struggling with, you are not alone. When I started blogging, I did it because I wanted to share my story and I wanted to be seen. I thought that I wasn't seen. I was just in the trenches for so, so many years. And it wasn't to, uh, to get personal um, pats on the back, but it was to minister to others because in that ministry, I am encouraged.